Aloha everyone, it is Saturday evening in Maui whenever I make this video, and I first want to say that this past week was one of the weirdest weeks that I've experienced in about 18 years. The last time I can remember um, a market diverging so much like it did in one day was back in 1999. Back in 1999, if I can remember correctly, I'd have to go look at the charts, but off the top of my head, I remember sessions when the Dow Jones Industrial Average would run and the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 would sell off, and vice versa at the end of 1999. I remember sessions when the NASDAQ would be up 3% with the, Na with the Dow Jones Industrial Average down you know, half a percent, and that would happen quite often at the end of 99 into the end of the 2000 run. So I've seen this before, but it's been a long time, and I don't think we're in any kind of bubble environment because uh, it still should be healthy for more price upside. Because remember, whenever this is happening in 99, I would still get quite a few long signals, but they were much prettier. Like, uh, here's what this stock would look like if it was 1999. Green bop through the entire base, and then see these volume bars? They would be huge. And then this would be max green right here in this section. So the charts are way different now than then, but, man, this past week... I've never seen such a weird mix of signals in my um, entire time since really employing the methodology the way I do now since 2012. Um, never had so many different long signals with sell signals, but then with so many other of my holdings just acting normal, not having to do much with their stops. So very, very odd. But you know what? Most of these signals, most of the long signals did work. Some failed immediately like data, but most of them worked immediately and are holding up and as long as that the overall market is still trending higher the SPY even though it had an ugly day still trending up IWM is still trending up Dow Jones Industrial Average very nice day on Friday still trending up and even though the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 had an ugly day it's still above its 50-day moving average so we're still under operational buy neutral modes across the board and as long as that's the case whenever I get a signal I'm gonna take it so this weekend I got five signals um, three new long positions, one quality long position, TRHC. The problem with TRHC, though, is look where the 20-day moving average is compared to price. It's very extended. So while I like this pattern because it's technically a near breakout pattern, I know you can't see it and it's not going to open up, but it's closing higher than where it opened. 1434 is a close. 1432 is where it opened. So it's a bullish reversal candle over candle pattern on above average volume with bop confirmation pocket pivot point signal it has a round out looks like it wants to build either a cup or a cup with handle possible base and keep on going but like i said with it being extended from the 20-day moving average it's risky so it's a can some quality stock initially found in my ipo scan but then i checked its fundamentals and i saw oh earnings per share is up over 100 percent sales are up 30 percent in the most recent quarter that's excellent. Can some quality, 79 EPS rating. And it was confirmed in my price volume BOP scan and tertiary scan. So 4% account capital is what it's supposed to be. But since it's extended from the 20-day moving average, 2% of my account capital goes in TRHC. Limit order at 1434. Can't pay up because it's extended from the 20-day moving average. First cut loss, 1370. Second cut loss, 1297. And the thing is, 1297, I do not plan on it coming into play unless it pulls back every day on below average volume with BOP growing every day. And then if it cuts out that low, then it'll come into play. But if it fails this level here on above average volume or even on any kind of volume and loses green BOP, you can be sure I'll be out of this name before that stop comes into play. Then NCOM, I got an ad signal straight up from just my canceling scan. Wasn't confirmed in any other scan but my tertiary scan, but another bullish hammer candle reversal pattern, candle over candle, above average volume, and you can see BOP confirmation slightly higher. So I want to add to it. It's a 2% ad signal, but since it's an ad signal, just be 1%. And I know that the 5, 10, and 20, are, the 5 is not even in between the intraday price range, but this is already just a 2% position, so I want to add to it just half of it, and that's 1%. I don't want to go any smaller because it's a great stock, and if I'm wrong, I don't risk much because I'm going long since it is right here. I can go ahead and pay up to 39.15 if I wanted to, or not 39.15, 39.75, but since it is above the open and close above the 5 10 and 20 day moving average even though they're all touching the intraday range since the five is not at least up in the intraday range i don't want to pay up for it so my limit orders at 39.15 so even though i don't half the one percent size because it's an ad signal two percent cancel them normally add signal one percent half at 0.5 percent since it's ex extended from that 5 10 20 from the intraday bar no it's touching the intraday bar 
so it's not that extended. But since the five is below that open and close, I can't pay up for the limit order. So 39.15, first stop 37.55, and then since the next stop is so close at 37, we'll just go ahead and use the final lows at 36.80. So for right now, I had 37 on my initial order. I'm now splitting it up 37.55. 3680. It moves below this one, out half, moves below this one, I'm out all of it. Then CLDT is giving an ad signal, pretty clear cut. This was only in my BOP scan on Friday. It was, I think, only in my BOP scan the day before, actually. I'm not sure, Max Green BOP scan. It looks like that's the only one it would have showed up again. So it only showed up in my Max Green BOP scan again on Friday. But this time, it also was confirmed in my tertiary scan since volume was above average. But the bullish hammer candle over candle pattern Max screen bop, volume surge. It's all right there. So when I get long at 2010, you can use two stops at 1968 and 1945 if you want to. But since I think that this is a 1% position and now a 0.5%, only one half percent position, and I love the max screen bop and the bullish candle over candle pattern, I'm just going to be using 1945, my one and only stop. So those are the two ads, CLDT, NCOM. And then there's the two speculative swing trade signals, EGLT, nice bullish candle over candle pattern, above average volume, max screen BOP confirmation. This was in my price volume BOP surge scan, confirmed in my tertiary scan, or actually it was just in my tertiary scan. Want to get long with a limit at 262, first stop 230, final stop 203. However, 203 will never come into play if 230 is taken out on either heavier volume or if it losing max screen BOP, loses max screen BOP. Or heavier volume below this, I'm out. If it pulls back on low volume and max screen bop, yeah, then 203 is into play. But I don't think that that's going to happen because it almost never happens. First target for EGLT will be up here, 347. Then right here, 560. Then right here, 736. Then right here, $10, the highs. So $10, 736, 560. 347 right there. And then there's AVGR, another swing trade. Both of these have the exact same kind of chart pattern. If you look at their MACDs and their RSI 14s, they were both oversold and they're now momentum RSI swing trades. MACD has been trending higher on EGLT since early May and in AVGR since these lows in May started. So MACD has been trending up like this. RSI was oversold here. It's moved back above the 30 line and is now curling towards the 50 line. AVGR, bullish candle over candle pattern, above average volume surge, or actually a higher and a higher volume surge than the day before. Max screen bop confirming the pattern. I want to get long a limit at 41 cents only. It's gapping up after hours. I will not chase. Only cut loss level, the lows, 35. First target, boom, right there, clear cut, 59. Next target, boom, right there, 77. And then for now, the only final target I can find is 139. After that, it would be the 200-day moving average. But you can be sure if, if it gets back up here, that's going to probably be down towards that level two. So then we'll see. If anything, it'll probably be this high, 195. Good luck that ever coming to play, 290. That almost never happens. The chances of it even getting back to this bar is low. But it should do it. It already looks good after hours. We'll see if that can carry over into Monday. All right, everybody. Very, very, very weird week. Um, had over 20 trades every single session. 20 trades, 20 buys and sells every single session the past week. It's $100 in commissions. It's really not a big deal, but that's a lot of trading, folks. I don't like to trade that much. The optimal portfolio would be five stocks, 20% each. Ten stocks, 10% each. If you have under $100,000 in your account, I recommend each trade you take be 10% of your account capital. And you obey those stops, unless those stops are, so, are at a point that it creates too big of a dollar loss to your portfolio, then you either need to reduce your position size and or raise your stops to an arbitrary, illogical, irrational level to prevent you from losing enough money. As long as I don't have stocks that look at my past big winners from 1998 to 2008. Look at some of those past big winners. If you don't see that, then you know I'm not going to load up on anything. All right, everybody. Aloha.